Welcome back everybody. This is update number 27. Update 27? Update number 27. Update number 27. Now the way my update videos work is that I go back to 10 past products I reviewed in order, take a look at the original video in case you missed that, and I give you an update if anything's changed since my original video. Without further delay, let's get right to update number 27. Number 261 was a collection of weird gadgets from Amazon. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. This is a shirt folding board. Supposed to help you fold clothes quickly. All right, so then all you do is fold one side, fold the other side, fold the bottom up, and there we go. A reusable straw. Big American fountain drink versus the reusable straw. All right, well, it wasn't as smooth as silk. It's kind of hard to tell where the bottom's at when you're pushing it in there. It just keeps going because it just starts folding over. It's a little bit floppy. Is that too bad to you guys? What do you think? I don't know. Mini bag sealer. Feels kind of cheap. There we go. It's actually sealed. All right, now I'm getting there. I'm getting it. Oh yeah. Let's see if this actually works on a bag of cereal. That might be interesting and not too bad. Despite being kind of cheap, small, and a little bit awkward and the cutter doesn't work great. Other than that, it's perfect. This is the Flexit 2.0 flashlight. It can be bent in any position. Look at this. All right, so the Flexit is supposed to stick to the side of your car, like say you're changing a tire at night. Well, the magnets are holding. The light's nice and bright. You know what? I think I kind of like that. If you're broken down on the side of the street, you could put it next to your car like that. All right, you got high, medium, low, strobe, and off. Now what the Flexit can do that none of the others can do is wrap around, which is actually pretty useful. Now what the Rocket Book is, is a reusable notebook. When you write on the page, you then use the Rocket Book app and you can actually send it to any of these destinations. And then you wipe the pages clean and start over again. Diamond I have assigned to Dropbox. Now get my Rocketbook app. Aha, got it. Boom. There it went. And you'll notice that it has the diamond symbol at the bottom there because it detected that it was marked. Hit send. It's already going to my Dropbox. I don't have to set anything else up. So I would say of those items, I probably use the Flexit flashlight and probably the flexible straws the most. I probably used the flexible straws maybe uh, six times in the last year, the flashlight maybe four times. They're very situational, not really for everybody. Uh, the others I didn't use quite as much. Even though I found all of them to work, I just didn't find that I had a lot of use for all of them. Number 262 was a collection of weird wallets. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. First, let me try the bizarre peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet. Look at the inside. So they have two money pouches here, two credit card slots, and in the side, they have two business card slots. So it'll stay thin if you don't have much in there, and it'll stay thicker if you have more. I fit everything in the peanut butter and sandwich wallet. The Dream Phone Case Wallet. Again, this isn't really supposed to be a fully loaded wallet. It's more like a wallet alternative. So it has some wallet spaces here, but not a lot. All right, and it does close. It's a little bit thick, but it does close. It's kind of thick, but I've got two different things there. My phone, my phone case, and all my cards and cash. So I actually free up a pocket that way, even though the one I usually use is a little bit thicker. As seen on TV, top wallet. This is definitely a George Costanza wallet. Look at the size, look at the thickness of this, and it's empty. Whoa, whoa. It's like an accordion. They even say in the instructions that you have to probably use two hands, and I can see why, because when I'm trying to shove it in here, look at this. It's just push. it's not even going in there, it's just pushing down. Look how thick that looks. I feel like I need some napkins to lift me up on the other side to even out. That is really thick. Now they say you're supposed to put the cards you use the most here. It'll hold four to six, depending on their thickness. All right, and there we go. Again, I, I was not able to put everything in here. Boom. I do like that. Very nice. <laughs> Stick on phone wallet. Fits most phone cases, it's ultra thin, stretches to hold up 10 cards and removes cleanly. Well, hey, you know what? Seven business cards fit. I give, I give them credit for that. Can I squeeze a little bit of cash in there as well? 
cash doesn't want to go all the way down. Wow, that's completely stuffed. Well, it doesn't feel much thicker than a regular phone. I've got three really good choices here and I'm happy about that. So a year later, you would think that I probably would have gone with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich wallet or the Exter. Now I actually gave the Exter away to someone who actually quite enjoys it. But of those actually, the one I use the most has been the Dream Fibonacci wallet phone case. It's not my primary wallet, but I've actually used it quite a bit, especially the times when I don't want to have my wallet and my phone case. To, I want to just kind of consolidate things, like if I'm going to a pool or something, I can just put a couple of things in the pockets here and I'm good to go. I also like the fact that you can just kind of detach this like a shuttlecraft and kind of have its own case here. It goes back to the mothership and you're good to go. It's kind of heavy. It's not really a full wallet, but if you just need to scale down to a mini wallet, this is actually a great choice. For my 263rd product review, I tested out four Amazon oddities. Let's first take a look back at how that original video went. It's a scented flavored cup that you add water to it and it supposedly tricks your brain into thinking you're drinking something besides water. Now they say you're supposed to inhale from your nose while you're drinking out of it so you can smell the smell on there. Well, my brain isn't so easily fooled. My nose smells berry, but my tongue tastes water. The more I smell it, the less I like it. Now I have to hold it right up to my face to smell it when I'm drinking, which is even worse. In one version of the packaging, they're called thermal finger guards. In another version of the packaging, they're called chip fingers. You just kind of slide it, slide it on there like that. I'm gonna tear into these with both hands and see how they look. Oh no. Now you can't really see if there's much on these. I don't think there is. I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. I'm not sure if people are gonna want this, but it did work. You're supposed to put your fingers in these holes and pull. Whoa. Yep, that's a stool, all right, yeah, yep. Wow, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. Oh, wow. Also with this one, you can adjust it at different heights. Whoa. I have a pre-drawn whiteboard here. I'm gonna put one of these in each corner and show you how it works. All right, so I'm gonna hit new scan and it's gonna look for those four corners. Let's see what happens. It's looking for the whiteboard right now. Oh, I just found it, see that? Automatically found it. Boom, saved and there it is. Very cool. All right, I've got my beautiful Bitcoin chart right here. Ah, I found it. Boom. It's kind of a situational thing. I don't think everybody uses whiteboard that often, but if you do, they work quite well. I would say of that list, the uh, collapsible stool is the one that I've definitely used the most. It's place number eight in my best of 2020. It's actually a very good product. Also oddly satisfying. It's something that gets used probably once a week. Uh, it's held up well. I stand on it, I sit on it. I found a lot of uses for it. I'm actually quite happy with it. I should also point out that there's been a lot of vendors recently on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter even, that have been stealing my video of that clip when I tested out the collapsible stool and using it for their version, which is not even the same one. I suggest not doing business with a company that will not only steal someone's video without permission, but also advertise a different product than the one they're selling. But overall, the collapsible stool is something I found to be quite useful. This is number 264, the Tonu trash can. It's an automatic trash can, kind of expensive, but the geek factor is real. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. Oh, well that worked. Oh, and there is a light inside there. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna throw some random trash in there. All right. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Whoa. Whoa. Now that is pretty cool. Oh, and it's doing something else. It's doing something else. Oh, 
Well, what did it just do? Oh, it's got a new bag. Totally sealed. Ready to go. I have to admit that actually worked. I think when the size goes up and the price goes down, this is gonna be something a lot of people are gonna want. Until then, it's a bit of a novelty. I have to admit, I actually really like this trash can I use on a daily basis. It's right next to my desk. This is why I placed number nine on my best of 2020, even though it is a bit expensive. I've even bought a bunch of refills because I plan to keep using this one long term. A couple of quick observations since my original review. The, the battery, I feel like I have to charge maybe every few weeks. One time the bag did not seal properly. There was a hole in the bottom. So when I pulled it out of there, all the trash went back in the can. But otherwise it's worked quite well. I'm surprised they haven't put out a full size version yet, but at this point, if they do, I'll probably buy it. Number 265 were Smart Cups. These are advertised as the world's first printed drink. Now there were some concerns about it being a single use product, but they do say that it's made from bioplastic. But first let's take a look at how the original video went. It's supposed to be the world's first printed beverage. It's kind of marketed as an energy drink. So I guess for $2 a piece, it really isn't that bad. That's the flavor which is printed into the cup. It's not an overly large cup. They say this is bioplastic. What they don't say is, what about all this packaging? What's this made out of? They don't say that that's bioplastic. I actually sent an email to the company asking about that and they haven't responded yet. So they're trying to promote this as an environmentally friendly solution even though it's a one use cup. It's a little bit like one of those Alka-Seltzers where you can see every, the bubbles coming up from the bottom. It's been two minutes and it's still dissolving. All right, total time is three minutes. I've got high hopes for you smart cups. You better come through. Not quite what I expected. It's a little bit blander than I expected. It's not a bad flavor, it's just not a very strong flavor. This tastes kind of like a, like a crystal white packet you pour into like oh. a water bottle. It tastes kind of similar to that. I didn't think about that. Crystal Light's pretty close, yeah. It's a pretty close comparison. I was saying a barely sugared Gatorade, but that's, that's Crystal Light's probably even better. I don't know about that, that. That full cup of that, would you pay two bucks for it? I don't think so. It's like a caffeinated Crystal Light. For two bucks for a cup? I don't know about that. I think taste-wise, it was all right. If when you add other drinks to it, it masks the otherwise somewhat weak flavor. I'm not sure if I'll buy these again though. So I used all the smart cups and I gave a few of them away. I didn't order any more. The person I gave them to didn't order any more either. Someone online asked me to put it in water and see if it would break down and it hasn't. I don't know if that really proves anything, but to the person that asked, there's your answer. It didn't break down in a year of sitting in water. So smart cups are an interesting idea. I'm just not sure if it's something that's gonna have mass appeal. Number 266 was the taco toaster. This supposedly turns a soft tortilla shell into a hard, crunchy taco shell. Let's take a look back at the original video. Now the way it's supposed to work is you slide it like this. Seems simple enough. Oh wow, my, my toaster will barely fit this. Look at this. These are standard taco shells, but it's hanging over just a little bit. I'm just gonna shove it in there. Ooh. This could get ugly real quick. And it's a little disturbing that it hangs over so much here, but I don't really have much of a choice. Oh, it's already smoking. It's kind of disturbing how that front part folds over. Assuming my taco toaster survives the first round, I'm gonna try, oh, it's done. Oh, it almost worked. This one worked a little bit better. I think that might be even acceptable. It seems kind of, I mean, it's retaining the shape, look. These corn tortillas are a little bit smaller, so they might work better. <laughs> I'm gonna really try to make this as nice as I can. It's better than the flour tortillas I have. Oh, oh, it's done. Oh, I'm, ac I'm excited. Oh, wow, oh, whoa. Hey now, look at this. Now, I think we might be onto something here. Oh man, that didn't look as cracked. Oh man. All right, it looks nice from the side, but look at this. Nope. So with the flour tortillas, I cut it down to five and a half inches and I found success. Now I cut the end off so it'll fit in the toaster better. Let's see if that works. Oh, look at that. It's fitting. It fits perfect. I know it's kind of ridiculous having to cut the end off, but that, that worked. Mmm. Once you play around with it, you might actually like it. So I did find that the taco toaster worked. I just didn't find it was particularly necessary. 
I've had tacos in my house, a soft and hard shell, and I've never really reached for it, so it works. It's just not something that I found very useful. I probably used it once or twice after the original video, but eventually ended up back in the boneyard. Number 267 was the Salbury Popcorn Bowl. It's actually just a microwave popcorn bowl that I had some requests for. Here's some scenes from the original video. The Salbury Popcorn Popping Bowl. It seems smaller to me in person than it looked in the photo, and it seems a lot flimsier. It goes inside the bowl. Here we go. All right, well, I do a popcorn preset. Let's do it. Let's see what we got here. Is it hot? It's a little warm. Ooh, we have popcorn. All right, let's take a look here. Looks like a nice batch of popcorn. That's all that's left. I think it did a pretty good job. Bailey and I are gonna watch some TV now, and I'm pretty happy with the salary, although you do have to season it afterwards. It's a little bit bland if you don't. But otherwise, I think it's a pretty good option to make some cheap popcorn. So I've used this on occasion. I, this is not the kind of popcorn I usually make, but when I do, this works pretty well. I have no real complaints. It's held up over time. So as far as I'm concerned, the salary popcorn bowl works as well now as it did from my original video. Number 268 was the Hamdogger. It's a simple device that allows you to make hot dog shaped hamburgers. Let's first take a look at how the original video went. This is basically a mold that allows you to make hot dog shaped hamburgers. That seems pretty simple. Just pushing down this up. Oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second. The first one looks pretty good, I think. Not bad. Okay, I think that's pretty well formed, but the meat is sticking to the top. This is it's getting kind of messy here. All right, and finally, I'm just gonna try a quarter pound of ground beef and making it by hand and see what I can do. This is the one I did by hand. Do I really need a special device for that? Made by hand, with cheese in the center, and made with a ham dogger. Not a huge difference. This might be an occasion to make something like this, but I still don't think you need a separate device to do it. Now I've made hot dogs since that video was made. I've made hamburgers since that video was made. Not once have I ever reached the hamburger to make a hot dog shaped hamburger. If I happened to want a hot dog shaped hamburger, I'd probably just roll with my hands and the results would be pretty close. So to me, the ham dogger is an item that will probably forever reside in the Freakin' Reviews Boneyard. Number 269 was a comparison of the ShamWow versus a dollar store version to see how they stacked up. Here's some scenes from the original video. Today I'm just doing the dollar store versus ShamWow comparison. Full sized ShamWow. This is the fake ShamWow from the dollar store called Handy Shammy. I mean, it seems pretty saturated already. Uh, it just kind of stalled. That's just not good. So, I mean, really less than a cup, probably. And now for the real ShamWow. Well, this is pretty saturated, too. Maybe the, uh, maybe the fake ShamWow didn't do so bad after all. Maybe it's a tie. All right, still wet. Still wet, still not impressive. Fake ShamWow. Real ShamWow. The, tw the ShamWow claims to hold 20 times its weight in water. This claims to hold five times, but to me, they're holding about the same. I think the dollar store is the better deal of the ShamWow comparison. So over the past year, I continue to use the sh Handy Chamois and the ShamWow, but after a year, they're kind of looking a little bit ragged, especially the Handy Chamois because it kind of disappeared one day. I didn't see it for a while. I finally found it way in the corner of my yard underneath some stuff. So it's, it's looking kind of worse for wear. You see how it looks now? It's kind of, the color's gone. It's kind of faded. I would say for a buck though, that I certainly got my money's worth. I would say for long-term use, the ShamWow is probably a better product, but for average daily use, short-term, Dollar Store ShamWow was the better deal. Number 270 were these bristles kitchen scrubbing gloves, and these were advertised a lot on social media back in 2020. Let's take a look back at my original review. Here we go. All right, well, that's, that's not terrible. Not bad, really. It's, it feels a little weird just rubbing my hand on there. By the way, this is pretty hot water, and my hand's getting pretty hot. I'm gonna use scrubbing gloves for one, and I'm gonna use a regular sponge in the other and see what the difference is. Oh. 
definitely more challenging. I think the hot water's taking off more than the scrubbing is. Oh, that's much, much better. Without the hot water running on it, much better. Speaking of nasty, this is probably the nastiest thing that I've got. This doesn't feel very safe. It doesn't feel safe. I feel like I'm gonna break this glass. It's very slippery. I feel like it's gonna slip out of my hand. This could easily fall out of someone's hands. I feel like with the sponge, I can go farther down to the bottom. So I feel like the sponge, I could hold onto the glass better and I could get down to the bottom better as well. The sponge certainly was the superior of those two. I feel like it's a bit gimmicky. I don't feel like it really gives you anything over a standard pair of kitchen gloves and a sponge. Now, I wasn't very impressed by these. I, I tried using them. I actually left them out by my sink for months. Nobody ever reached for them. They're, the bristles are too weak. They don't really work that well. It's not even as good as a regular sponge. It's an interesting idea, but to me, it's more gimmicky than functional. Well, that's it. With every batch of products, there's a lot of hits and misses. I would say the best products I've used from that batch would be the collapsible stool and the Tonu trash can, both of which I use regularly and I still like. I would say at the bottom, I'm gonna kinda go with the right cup. That one's the wrong choice for me. But I'll have another update video in a few more months. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.